morning. I'm the last presentation of this workshop, so I think it's really appropriate to, to continue the focus that, that the participants have had on bringing it back to the smallholder farmer. Um, talking about income, talking about food security, but also bringing it back to nutrition and resilience, and bringing us back to a workshop aim to move from a project mode to a sustainable non-project mode. Uh, very briefly, I don't think many of you know me. Um, I've worked for CIAT, for the CGIAR for a number of years, but particularly for the Pan-African Bean Research Alliance. That alliance, Pabra, did reach 18.3 million people in a decade. So you might want to look at it as a case study. And then second, I also work in high stress. Um, so I've led the U.S. government assessments in Haiti after the earthquake, in Rwanda after the genocide pre-referendum in South Sudan. So it's, um, it, it's from high stress to commercial farmer. Okay, very briefly, I am here representing Syngenta on a study which Mark very kindly stimulated. Just to show you that there are a series of briefs that you might want to look at for your planning this afternoon. They're very practical, very advice. So if you have to scale up demand, which we haven't talked about, what might you think about? You know, if you have to scale up access to finance, what are your options? So do take a look. Okay, um, just to give the context, you know, we've been talking a lot about seed systems. Not everyone here is a seed system expert. Generally, across the world, farmers are involved in two types of seed systems. There's the outer ring, which is the red which is the formal seed system, so that's improved varieties, certified seed. So that might be the government, the commercial sector, or really. There is the inner circle, which is sometimes called traditional, local, informal seed system, and that's harvest, your own stock. It might be exchange or it might be local market. The latest data worldwide, very rigorous, shows that about 89% of the seed that farmers use, small farmers use, so 90%, comes from this inner loop. We've been focusing a lot on the outer loop. So how do we start to integrate the two better? That's why I'm here. Uh, again, we've been focusing a lot in this talk so far, and we've done a superb job at the right, at the agro-dealer system, the seed companies. Then we have somewhere this public system, webinars. What we haven't talked about, which I'm trying to fill in a gap here, is the whole informal system. And I'm going to focus on markets, because this is a market talk. Okay? This is a market panel. OK, so these seed markets, these local seed markets, what is the extent? of this market use. Okay, I'm joined from a data set uh, stimulated by USAID. Um, it's the largest data set in the world on seed systems. And it basically says, where does a small farmer actually get her or his seed? Right now, you can see it's six countries, Malawi, Kenya, Congo, Haiti, South Sudan, Zimbabwe. We have three more to add. But this is an evidence-based talk that I want to share. And then we talk about how this leads us to catalytic opportunities. OK, what is the extent? This is a real surprise for us, 10,000 observations. What you see in the red is that 51% of the seed that farmers sow comes from local markets. So the stereotype is that small farmers save their seed. Okay? Small farmers here, only about a third of the seed is saved. Local markets is over half, and our agro-dealer Swatch at this point is 2%. So our seed company, agro dealer Swatch, is 2%. So we have some work to do. Let's, let's deal with reality here. OK? What are the crops supplied by local markets that are planted? This is just from the data set. This is 30. There are actually 40. The main message here is that it's a diversity of different kinds of crops, which is going to be key for resilience concerns. Where are farmers going to get 
the diversity of crops, which they absolutely need. I'm introducing the legume issue because it's gotten lost. What's striking here is that local markets are the driver for legume seed. Pigeon pea, cow pea, mung bean, beans, uh, help me guys, whatever I left out. Cow pea, thank you. Okay. Um, Zimbabwe was a bit of an outlier, but 50 to 80 percent of the legume seed that farmers plant comes from local markets. If you are interested in nutrition, you have to figure out how to exploit these better. The green is the agro dealers. Okay? Really important. This is helping us think. Gender. And I got maize because you guys love maize. And what I wanted to do here was to compare the markets for maize. So we're comparing agro dealers versus local markets for two of the maize countries in Africa, Malawi and Kenya. Okay. Where do farmers get the seed they plant? Well, first of all, both agro dealers and local markets are important. The big message is that local markets are more important. And the third message is that women have a higher emphasis on local markets. Men have a higher emphasis on agro-dealers. There, there are gender differences in the channels you use. Last point, which is a shocker for all of those in research. Where do farmers get the varieties they absolutely have to get to make us productive? 68%, 70% of the time are government NGO assistance. Non-sustainable channels, free. Awful. If you look at the commercial possibilities, 7% do come from agro dealers. So that's really important. But 14% of the cases of new varieties come from local markets. How can we exploit this better? Okay, so this is a lot of stuff, but just the key messages. These informal markets, which we haven't talked about so far, they provide the heart of the seed supply. This is important for food security. They presently provide the bulk of the legume seed, which is important for nutrition. They allow a wide range of crops which is going to be important for resilience. And then they offer a place for innovation, for income. So remember we had that panel with these four guys and four chairs, and then we had um, Suzanne saying these are our four pillars. Thinking about how to support these markets allows us to address the four diverse pillars at once. But it's not the only option, but let's not leave it out. Okay. Moving forward, what am I doing on time? Okay, move. Great, okay, perfect. <laughs> Moving forward, I'm going to give just a single case. Thank you. I'm going to give a single case, a single thing about an area you can intervene. You should know in, in our study, we do look at vegetatively propagated crops. Maria's here. Hi, Maria. Um, we do look at seed quality. I just want to give a, a case of catalytic opportunity. Okay, so moving to variety scaling goal, the first thing we have to do is increase the proximity of outlets to get seed to farmers. Agro-dealers are important. People use agro-dealers. What else can we do? These are well-known, evidence-based, catalytic opportunities. You can license mom-and-pop stores where you go to get sugar, kerosene, salt. They can also sell seed. You can expand current seed sales at supermarkets, as is done in Kenya and Malawi, but mostly for maize and vegetable seed. You can consign seed pack sales to large traders. These are the big guys in the chain, these large traders. Go to the markets. But then we also want to suggest on the agro-dealers and priority that we map agro-dealer outlets related to the target stress. So if you're working on drought tolerance, map agro-dealer presence in drought tolerance zones. That's how we're going to scale up. Okay. Second goal on scaling up new varieties. You have to look at pack size and, and how farmers can purchase more cost effectively. Um, 
you. I really like that you do certified seed at the farm level. That is a tremendous innovation. In addition, in addition, we have to look at maybe quality declared seed, something that costs less. If farmers want a new variety, how do you package and move quality declared seed? Similarly, I, I, you know, if you want to invest, support research on tax size by cropping context, and your administrator, Rajiv Shah, has put some very interesting things here. Second to last slide. Something that we haven't said about a lot about, but Richard said just now, so thank you. All of this is about information, helping farmers to make informed choices. How do we do that in a smart way? We think there has to be higher investments, particularly in SMS two-way, not just getting information out, but getting feedback back. You know, and particularly, I went to the rest, what is the location of seed suppliers? If farmers want seed, where do they get it? Second, feedback. Did the variety work? Was the seed quality good? Did it live up to expectations? Third, in this two-way feedback system, you have agro dealers, you have farmers. How do you engage the large traders? Last slide, three closing points. Don't ignore the elephant in the room. The elephant is the informal sector. Now, this doesn't mean support the informal sector. It means consider integrated options to leverage the best of the formal and the best of the informal. Second, how do we catalyze leverage points? Like licensing mom and pop stores, that's a leverage point. That's not getting bigger. That's not scaling in terms of numbers. That's a leverage point. How do we start to do that? Um, and if we're going to invest, let's invest in the sustainable. Seriously, let's, let's invest and work at scale to expand the structures that are already working at scale, make them better.